Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, my guest is Ruth Mendelssohn, who is a film composer and multi-instrumentalist, and she is joining us by Skype from the Boston area. Welcome, Ruth Mendelssohn, to the World Fusion Show. Thank you, Derek. It is a real honor to be here. Well, it is certainly my honor and pleasure to have you with us today and to talk about your film composing process and all the great work that you've done with film and your very strong world fusion influence in your work. Yeah. So this is really great. Now, I wanted to start off, as we often do, with your background. And you've got some great stories about how you started playing guitar. So please yeah. share that with us. Okay. Um, well, first of all, hey, everybody. I hope this finds you well and healthy and staying nice and safe out there. Um, I got started in Chicago and was way illegally underage. I would sneak into blues clubs. And that's really where I got my start was just being surrounded by this incredible music of blues, R&B, jazz uh, from a very early single digit age. And um, there was one time I was on, I, I was in the back of the checkerboard, which is a, an old club in the south side of Chicago. And there was a band called The Pieces that was playing on stage. These guys will never be known by anybody other than the local community. Some of the most masterful musician storytellers I've ever heard in my life. And the, there was this big guy named Murphy who had a guitar. He was a lead guitarist, not an adjustable strap. And he pointed to me one time and told me to come up to the stage. And I thought, that's it. I'm busted. I'm being kicked out. Finally. Right. You were age and 11, took, right? You were 11 right? years old, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, I was 11. Yeah. So, he took off his guitar and he handed it to me and he said, okay, come on, play. And I put it And at the time I was tinkering around on guitar, but only an acoustic guitar. I'd never touched an electric guitar in my life. It came down literally to my ankles. The band kicked into Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. And I took the world's worst solo in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awful. Right. And then I, I just left the club and sat on the curb outside, just totally dejected. And he said, no, he came out and he followed me. He was just a real angel. He sat down next to me and he said, no, he said, he said, you, you got it. You just need to just keep coming back, absorb the music. Just come back, come back. And I did. And you know, he, he was, he was right. So oh, that's, yeah. that's really how I got started. That's such a great story. And but also, you actually are self-taught. You started even earlier when you yeah. were just a little kid by sure. borrowing a friend's guitar. Tell us that story. Um, when I was three. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I really remember this like it was yesterday. It was just one of those things. I, I was at my neighbor Jeff Lakin's house, and we snuck into his older brother uh, Ronnie's room. Ronnie was seven, so we thought he was all that, because when you're three, seven is a big deal. Oh, yeah. And there was this guitar on the shelf in Ronnie's closet. And I remember it was, like, it was my first time I'd ever seen a guitar. And I said, like, what is that? And I used to trade my matchbox cars with Ronnie for a time to just sit on his front step and play guitar. Yeah. So that's, that's really how, that's when things really got started. I used to love the sound of ragtime music and I would just figure out bass lines and melodic lines. Yeah. You know, just figuring out completely bizarre fingerings just to somehow make it work. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just doing it, but I did it all the time. Yeah. I wanted to talk, go to our first video. And this is a really interesting thing. And I want to share a little of your process because we're going to watch a clip of this video about India without your music first and then watch it with your music. And I want you to talk a little bit about how you engage yourself in creating that music. Um, okay. The, the one thing that I've, it's, it's an ironic process to score to picture because for me personally, the first, and this is also what I tell my students because now I, I teach also, but um, you don't think music right away at all, which is very ironic because you, you're, you're there to score something, but the last thing I think about is music. It's all about learning the story. 
right. being informed. Let the footage inform me of itself. What does the director mean? What does the editor mean by the way it's cut? What's the story being told? So the first thing I do is watch the film at least 10 times, trying not to think music at all. If something intuitively rides in, I, I'll pay attention to it. But other than that, it, it's to um, empty my mind of, of everything other than just learning the story. Right. So that, that's the first piece. Right. So now you said in this one you were inspired by yeah. um, uh, a prayer that yes. said, right? So tell yeah. us about that. Um, every cue, and for those of you out there who don't know, a, a cue refers to a piece of music for a scene. So every cue has some kind of magic portal somewhere in the scene that that's your end point in terms of where to start getting your ideas for the score. So in this scene and really studying it, which is what you really have to do, um, the, the guy on camera says, we have a, who's from India, he says, we have a sloka in Sanskrit. And then he quotes what, this, what that sloka is. I happen to know, I've been to India a couple of times, um, pretty extensively, actually. Um, I was there for a while each time I went. Um, and I play every summer with, with master musicians from India. So I, I know a sloka is a, is a prayer of sorts, and it's always sung. And so when he quoted that one sloka, I happen to have no, I know the melody of that sloka. I mean, I learned that years and years ago. So, and, it, and it's just da, 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 da. I am not a singer, you guys. <laughs> da, I can play it. I can't sing. I wasn't given that one. But <laughs> da, 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 da. Like those three notes yep. are the notes of that sloka. And so the entire cue is based on those three notes. That's great. I tell you, let's go to the video right now. We're going to first see the one without music just has background noise and background sound and speaking, and then with your added music. Great. All these guards, all these steps with decorated with the millions of candles, what we call the Dev Diwali. All the 84 Ghat, starting from Raj Ghat to Asi Ghat, everywhere you will find the candles on the each of the step. It is like enlightenment. It opens our doors, it opens our eyes, you know, and then we are able to see the things in a better way. So lights are very symbolic. We have a sloka in Sanskrit, we say, Asato ma sad gamaya. Take me from uh, uh, from lie to the truthfulness. Tamaso ma jo tir gamaya. Take me from the darkness to the light. We pray to the God. these guards, all these steps with decorated with the millions of candles, what we call the Dev Diwali. All the 84 Ghat, starting from Raj Ghat to Asi Ghat, everywhere you will find the candles on the each of this step. It is like enlightenment. It opens our doors, it opens our eyes, you know, and then we are able to see the things in a better way. So lights are very symbolic. We have a sloka in Sanskrit. We say, Asato ma sad gamaya. Take me from, uh, uh, from lie to the truthfulness. Tamaso ma jo tir gamaya. Take me from the darkness to the light. We pray to the God.
without Ganges Varanasi is the same thing like a body without a soul. Mother Ganges is like a soul of Varanasi. back with Ruth Mendelssohn. Hey, so great. Very interesting music and um, just great stuff. And it's cool to see the change, the, the difference. Now, you are doing a wonderful project now with Jane Goodall. And I'd love yeah. you to talk about how that came about. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm actually doing a number of incredible different projects with with what I call, I, I refer to Jane Goodall as Dr. Jane. Yes. So we're, we're doing a lot of amazing projects together. I actually, for years now, have been touring with a gospel choir called One Human Family. Yeah. And a, as the bass player. And uh, we, we were asked to open at the UN in Geneva back in 2002. And so, and that was, oh, that was one of those hilarious gigs where every everything went wrong. Like every everything, everything, including my base was lost between Heathrow in London and Geneva. Oh jeez. And we had to play the next day. Yeah. I, it was crazy. But sometimes, you know, the wrong thing happens in the right way. So I was at the airport and I had to stick around and file 10 zillion papers for the lost and found department. And because I had to do that, I was on a later shuttle to my hotel. So I sat next to Jane Goodall's assistant on that later shuttle, and we really hit it off. We were just talking about music and service and the arts in general and how they can help youth around the world, which is a huge passion of mine. Yeah. And so at the gig itself at the UN, then the, the power went out. <laughs> on stage we had no sound check people are entering and it was i mean literally the entire world is entering into the the grand assembly hall and we have like no sound right. at all so i just closed my eyes i was like i can't <laughs> think about this too much right now so and we had to start so and then boom the power came back on now in the mayhem of all of the sound not working. The electricity was on in the rest of the hall, which was strange. It was only on stage. Yeah. So um, I had a uh, an amp that they had provided for me with wheels on it. And so I'm playing. I'm, I close my eyes. Power comes on. We start playing. And I'm thinking, this is the most warm, intimate sound. How do they do this in this hall? Because it's a huge space. Right. So I opened my eyes and in the mayhem, somehow someone had, the amp was now in front of me facing me. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is there, the amp is facing me. So I'm like standing there kicking the amp to get it to turn around. Right. Now, unknown to me, Jane Goodall's in the audience saying to her assistant, who I had met on the shuttle, looking at me saying, who is that? <laughs> and, and her her assistant was telling her all about our conversation. So then um, later that day, Jane just, the way that fate had it, when Jane was walking down the steps alone in the, in the, at, at the UN. And, um, and she was alone. So I went up to her and I was very geeky. You know, she's like, oh, Dr. Goodall, I just want to say thank you. You know, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I wanted to just acknowledge her and, the amazing work she's doing for the planet. And and then she was saying, no, oh no, Ruth, I know all about you. And would you carry my purse? I'm about to do a workshop. And that was it. We would literally, boom, arm in arm, walking to her workshop, which I attended about what can we do to help empower the youths, the world's youth through, through the arts. Yeah. And that was just, we just bonded. And then when I was back in the States, she called me. I, would, I do a lot of humanitarian work with the arts. And so... Um, that's a whole other that that would be another show. But the um, that was the bonding moment with Jane. And then um, she start she just took a real interest in what I was doing in terms of the humanitarian work, but also in terms of just what I do as a composer. And so that led to me producing 
an incredible um, multi-hour CD of her audiobook, My Life with the Chimpanzees. And I spent two, two years working on the sound design for that. So my, my engineer, Steve Thomas, and I had 45 minutes to convert her hotel room into a studio. And then Dr. Jane and I sat together. Dr. Jane read, updated and read the entire, recorded the entire book in 13 hours. Yeah. And then I spent the next two years working on the sound design. So it's like an old-fashioned radio show. Every single sound she refers to is sonically illustrated. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a, an amazing, immersive soundtrack. Yeah. So it, we actually just entered it for two Grammys. So yeah. um, under Best Spoken Word Album and uh, Best Historical. Great. And now you also have a video with her. And I want to go to the film clip, which shows your music with the documentary film about sure. Jane as well. Let's do that right now. When I first went to Gombe, it was the most amazing time of my life. One of the things which is important for her is to get away and retouch her route. No, it's okay. Everything which has happened today is because of of the experiences she had in the forest. And she needs to take strength from that. Yeah, better. The alone in the forest is what matters to her. Out in the forest, I had this very strong feeling of great spiritual power out there. It was the kind of feeling that I sometimes have in one of the old cathedrals where people have been to worship year after year after year. The chimpanzees I knew in the... Hmm. All right, we are back with Ruth Mendelssohn, film composer. Now, that's wonderful, of course. I'm a big fan of Jane Goodall's work. So it's great that you've done that. I'd love to go on to talk about another project that you did. In this case, it's a Mongolia project now. You didn't write the music, but you were asked to produce it on location in Mongolia. Tell us a bit about that. Okay. Well, originally I was going to, the original intention was to go with the film director, Melinda Levin, amazing documentarian, um, to Mongolia to record a band called Guren, which is a very celebrated Mongolian band throughout that whole region. Um, so that was, that, that was the original idea. Um, but then the director, the producer, and the sound recordist on the American side of the crew all canceled at the last minute. <laughs> so I went to Mongolia alone, <laughs> carrying all of the director's gear along with my own so that the Mongolian director would have the right cameras for it. Right. Um, yeah, it was it was insane, but an, an amazing, amazing journey. So, yeah, we worked. Uh, I, the, the members of Guren are just amazing, beautiful people that really express stunningly through their instruments. So um, I don't know if you want to play that now, or I mean, there's more to talk about well, in terms of these clicks. Sure, so. let's let's talk. Let's watch this first clip where you're recording okay. uh, the music from the group. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, we're back. That's great. And I can see why this group is so um, important and respected in Mongolia, for sure. Now, you also, you did a bunch of work there. And the next clip we're going to see is a short piece of a ceremony that you yeah. recorded. Tell our audience about that. Okay, well, it's, the, the film is actually about Mongolian shamanism, but it also addresses the issue of, as you can see in the previous clip, just the um, capitalism, what, what's happening in the country, industrialization. Um, but this, this, this trip was really the, the filming of some sacred ceremonies that had never been filmed ever yeah. before. And uh, that also normally would never, ever include anyone from the outside. So I was very, very, very honored to, to be there. Um, I became the sound recordist for all of the shoots because the original person wasn't able to come. Um, on the clip you're about to see, the director forgot to bring a boom mic. And for those of you who might not know what a boom is, it's, it's just basically a long pole so that the mic is suspended up in the air so that the camera does not, so it's off camera, but you still are recording sound in a scene. But he forgot the boom. So the only way to get good sound was I was literally on my stomach <laughs> holding the mic up to, and just staying out of the camera's way. So it was an interesting shoot. Um, the land out there, we were outside, you'll see, the land out there is so powerful, I have no doubt I received some kind of healing while I was out there. Um, but anyway, so that's a little bit of the background of this scene you're ab about to see. All right, let's go to the f video right now. time, but I wanted to go to our next clip, which is a very cool project that you did, uh, music to a film called The Prison Within. Very powerful project. So if yeah. you could just set that up for us, please. Um, sure. I, I, it's all about compassion. It takes place in a prison and where prisoners have the, um, who are convicted murderers and who've actually really done these crimes, it's not just a matter of racial profiling and ending up in prison. Um, these are actual criminals who, for the first time in their lives, have an opportunity to deal with their own trauma histories and how they transform. They get out of prison while they're in prison. And yet there's also somebody else in the film who's outside of prison, who is in prison in her mind, and how the two, the, the, this group and this person intersect through an amazing set of experiences in the film and how everyone heals basically through compassion. It, yeah. It's incredible. I've seen the film. It's very, very powerful. Let's go to the clip right now. Once I get to the prison, I can feel my heart pound. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about who people are in prison. 
and who those people are that are coming home from prison. There are some men that I definitely wouldn't want living next door to my family. There's another group, the majority of men that I left behind, that I think would come home and be a great asset to the community. Ruth Mendelssohn, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the World Fusion Show today and sharing your process with our audience. Well, thank you so much. Again, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh, our pleasure. Keep doing the good work you're doing. That's great. You too, Derek. Thank you for, you know, really supporting the arts. It's so important. So thank you for what you're doing. All right. Take care now. You too. All right. Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Thank you for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. And we've got lots more great shows, fantastic guests coming up. Please subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook and share the episodes with your friends. And I just want to say a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, the McKenzie Family, Charitable Trust, Dean's Beans, uh, Chris Pratt, uh, Nancy Feinberg, uh, and uh, all the great people that have supported our show over the last few years. Hey, and remember, as we always say, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. <laughs>